What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of News, Games, and More. As you can see, I'm dressed in my cyberpunk mirror shades and my cyberpunk yellow jacket because we're going to talk about cyberpunk. Big news dropped today, and we're going to talk all about it. But first, there's so much to talk about, but I want to give a shout out to our charity efforts. All summer of gaming long, iGen is asking you to donate to the Bail Project and the World Health Organization by clicking on the links in the description of your video player or by heading to donations.ign.com. The Bail Project is a nonprofit that pays for bail for people in need, reuniting families and restoring the presumption of innocence in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. The COVID-19 Response Fund is dedicated to studying, tracking, and combating the coronavirus pandemic. By donating, you'll have a chance to win IGN gift cards, codes for games, and swag from companies like id and Bethesda. Anyone who gives more than $50 will also have a shot at winning a Summer of Gaming custom Xbox One X, and it looks very cool. We've already generated over $35,000 in donations for these two great charities, so let's keep it up. Thank you so much to everybody who's given so far. Don't forget, you can also download the TikTok app, follow IGN, and search IGN Summer of Gaming hashtag for even more bonus gameplay, clips, news, exclusives, and originals. Or leave us a Yappa video comment in the comments section of any article on IGN.com, and your Yap could end up on the stream. Uh, so now that I got all that out of the way, I want to introduce my great cast today. That's right. I'm talking about Ryan McCaffrey, Seth Macy, and Matt Kim. Hey, everybody. How you doing? How's it going, guys? Oh, man. You know how I be. No, Seth, how do you be? I've actually been wondering. (laughs) I mean, you're looking at it. That's why I said you know how it is. Come on. Oh, okay. You're right. I got it. Now now I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, Ryan, Matt, how, how do you be? Uh, well, I right. played Cyberpunk, so that's that makes me happy. Great. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a little bit. I, I do want to talk to you about your your Cyberpunk impressions. We got a long look at Cyberpunk 27 to 7 today in the form of the uh, Night City Wire live stream. Ryan got to play this game, as we mentioned earlier this week, and I'm extremely jealous of that. Uh, I want to get yeah. to your guys' hands-on impressions, Ryan, and I want to get to everybody's impressions of the overall event. But first, I want to uh, I want to see what the people are saying. Uh, we actually reached out on Yappa. Remember, you can go into any article on IGN.com and leave a video comment or a yap, as they're colloquially known. And it might win, end up here on our show or on any IGN live event. So let's go ahead and look over at Yappa and see what uh, let's see what the fans had to say. Okay, not gonna lie. As incredible as the Cyberpunk 2077 Night City Wire was, the thing that got me most hype was hearing Paris and Miranda's different starting experiences. Miranda chose a nomad lifestyle, so she got to start over in the Badlands, whereas Paris chose a more corporate lifestyle, so he got to start in the corporate entity of uh, Arasaka Tower, I believe. Me, I think I'm going to choose a street samurai who starts on the streets of Night City, but what I want to know is what kind of character are you guys going to play and where do you want to start your Night City life? Well, I just want to give a shout out to that extremely intelligent and handsome commenter. Uh, he asked some really good questions <laughs> about, uh, you know, what kind of style we want to play in. And I want to get to that eventually, uh, because I do think that is a really important part of uh, what we're going to talk about today when it comes to cyberpunk. Uh, but I wanted to start with everybody's impressions of the overall presentation. Uh, Matt Kim, you're a big cyberpunk guy. Uh, why don't you tell us what you thought of today's stream? Uh, yeah, I mean, I covered it as part of the news team, and I thought it was one of the better i mean they're all good but one of the you know in this hard covid social isolation time it was a really good show like really smooth information was clean the trailers just ha- appeared you know nicely i don't know covering it was nice it was easy okay it's, good show. <laughs> it's yeah. an interesting I take really for up, me, Matt Kim. Uh, sorry yeah. it was from a news uh, the news team agreed that it was a well put on show and that mm-hmm. uh we covered it really nicely because of it did anything did anything particularly <laughs> jump out at you news wise? Was there anything that you saw that you thought, oh hey, I didn't know about that. That's really cool. Uh yeah, I mean a lot of the information was I wouldn't say known, but if you were familiar with the cyberpunk world and like the tabletop RPG, then a lot of it wouldn't have been familiar. But like seeing it in the game was really cool. Uh huh. Are you familiar with like, the cyberpunk world and the tabletop RPG? Uh, I've never played, but I looked up the wiki stuff extensively because of my job. Um, so you a know, true, the different a factions true millennial, like... you went straight to Wikipedia to find the information. <laughs> exactly. I appreciate that. I no, respect that. I went straight to the cyberpunk wikis, more specific. Uh huh. Okay. 
yeah. the actual cyberpunk Sounds wiki and, and what cyberpunk yeah. wiki information did you learn that helped to color your reception of today's event uh the different faction stuff is something that i was interested in on my own mm -hmm. and we gotta look at one of them the moxes the moxies the mox the mox the rock yeah. mm -hmm. the moxes yeah so but there's like what eight factions in the game total or maybe more i believe that i believe he said there was seven factions in the game yeah mm. uh sweet Thank you, Matt Kim. What about you, Seth? What did you think of today's presentation? I thought it was really cool. I mean, I was going to get this game anyway. By the way, if you pre-order it now, it's forty nine ninety five. You lock that price oh, okay. in. I'm just saying, right. deal's got here. Um, yeah, I'm this super is, excited. This is one of it's, my favorite. This is one of my favorite parts about bringing you on the show, Seth, is because I feel like you always know when there's a deal, and there's always a deal. So uh, there's yeah, always it's a real deal, clutch. my friend. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Thank you. That's what that's mm -hmm. uh, what I put on my resume as the header. Real clutch. Clutch. No, Real clutch. I'm very excited. There's this one dumb thing that during the uh, presentation, it, we we already went through it before on this clip. But the guy with the mask when he's talking, like the mask moves in a realistic mm -hmm. way, and I don't know why, but that just like appealed to me so greatly. I was like, oh, okay, they they're paying attention to stuff that doesn't even matter. So can you imagine moved like in a how realistic great... way? How like what do you what do you mean? Well, like he's got the way? mask on, and when he's talking, you know, he, obviously when you talk, your jaw moves. Unless you're one of those people that has like a jaw that's wired shut, and I'm sorry for that. Um, I feel for you, but you know, like the mask moves as if he's talking underneath of it, like that. You know, his jaw is actually moving, and they could have just left it there and not animated it, but they animated it mm -hmm. for just like a little a little guy with a mask on. I. I appreciate those little touches. This, this is truly the next generation kind of touch that you're looking for is animated, like realistically animated mask movement. Yeah, that's what we were that, promised in the 90s yeah. was that someday yeah. we would play a video game where the masks were realistically animated. Yeah. Oh, OK. All right. That's cool. What else? What else did you like about the presentation? About, uh, I guess, just building hype. Let's. Mm -hmm. Let's get mm -hmm. excited about cyberpunk because it's, uh, are you, you know, we have, am I what excited? Are you more, are you more hyped or are you equally hyped as you were prior to today's Ooh, presentation? That's a good question. I, I mean, I think my hype level is, is, is greater now than it was before, but I don't think it's, you know, it hasn't doubled. It's maybe mm -hmm. 10 to 15% higher than it was before. But oh my god! I just remembered. Speaking of deals, there's a cyberpunk goodies package on uh, Good Old Games. It's all free, free stuff. Wallpapers. What is what is that? Out. What does that package entail? It's uh, wallpapers, um, uh, printable art. You know, like real mm -hmm. high resolution stuff. Um, I think the you get actually free posters that go in the game itself, which mm -hmm. is like a really cool thing. It's just like free. It's free stuff, and you don't have to pay for it. Who doesn't like that? That's cool. Right on, man. I want to ask the uh, chat as well what they thought of today's presentation because I see there's a lot of uh, uh, console talk happening in the chat right now. But if you're not paying attention, Ooh. chat, we're talking about cyberpunk. So you tell us what you thought of today's presentation. But right now, I'm going to throw it over to my guy, Ryan McCaffrey. Ryan, you got to play how many hours? Like 22 hours of the game earlier this week? <laughs> I, I really wish it had been because it was uh, not to look a gift horse in the mouth. It was the first four hours, but I really wished it was 22 because uh i barely got anything done there's just a lot going on in this video game yeah so we have about we we got to go to break pretty quickly but i did want to get your impressions as somebody who's played the game what did you think of today's presentations uh well the for me what jumped out since i had the privilege of playing the game a lot of the content in the like the game stuff in the night city wire presentation wasn't new per se to me but the the Netflix anime that's coming in a couple of years that seems like it's going to be super cool. Very jazzed for that. So I think that was that was my personal highlight from today's Night City Wire presentation. I didn't peg you for a big anime boy, but I like that you were into that. I'm a big Studio Trigger fan. I thought that was also a very cool additional announcement that happened today. Uh, and also, uh, you know, I think that the, the presentation itself, like Matt said, was just really well constructed. I love that they opened it with a cool story trailer that gives us a little more of a glimpse at that world. And then they moved into like a, a real gameplay breakdown. I love it when games do that kind of stuff. You know, I think Rockstar kind of pioneered the, the way with that about Red Dead and GTA. So I love to see these kind of deep dive things now ryan you got to play the game we're going to get into your hands-on impressions but first we got to take a little break if you guys are out there watching this make sure you're donating make sure you're leaving us the apps we'll be right back after this break to talk more cyberpunk
The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and iGen is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. Everybody loves watching a speed run of their favorite game. But what if you got the opportunity to peek into the minds of the developers while they watch their games getting completely wrecked? That's exactly what happens in every episode of Game Devs React to speedruns. You can do that. Oh my god! <laughs> we invite you to ride along with the developers as they react to, question, and enjoy some of the most skilled players exploiting and speeding through a game it took years of their life to create. Join us every Saturday for a new episode. Hey there, if you have opinions on games, movies, TV, or other weird stuff on the internet, you can take part in our new show, Power Ranking, where you can vote on all your favorite things on the internet. Go Do it now. Ahead. Do it. Just go. Do vote. it. Go vote. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. See you there. And we're back. We're still talking about so much cyberpunk today, you guys. Ryan, uh, you got a, ha a chance to play this game earlier this week. We already talked about it. you played upwards of 30 hours in your preview. Um, can you tell us a little <laughs> bit of what you saw in this lengthy preview that you played? Yeah, so you, you, what's cool is you start uh, with a prologue and you have one of three backstories to choose from. You touched on it at the top of the show, Zach. I went with the corporate backstory. I actually would have chosen Nomad. That was the one that appealed to me the most, which is as you mentioned, starts on the outskirts of town in the Badlands. But uh, Miranda Sanchez, who also played and also wrote a preview, we actually, it's very rare that we write two previews of the same game at the same time, but uh, this was the perfect game to do it with all the different choices and options that you have. And we kind of talked ahead of time, like, okay, which one do you want to do? Which one do you want to do? She took Nomad. So they're, okay, let me, I'll, I'll take the more or less opposite experience of that from a geographic perspective and take the corporate guy, uh, the corporate V, which uh, is starts you right downtown, right in the thick of it, in the Arasaka corporate tower. The game opened with me vomiting into a sink on mm -hmm. <laughs> on uh, in the office, and then your 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 buddy Jackie calls you, and your boss calls you in, and it, it just I don't want to give spoilers away. I don't really talk too spoilery detail in the preview, but there's some general stuff. So, I mean, if you don't want to know anything, avoid the preview, but there's a, a preview that, I, there's a video version on IGN and on YouTube, but also the the written version of the preview is like 2000 words. It's twice as long as the video, a lot more detail there. But I will a, say- a preview. Yeah. Yes, it is one of the longer ones uh, tip, than what we typically do. But yeah, it's the the, the ultimate conclusion that I came to very quickly about this game based on the first four hours and and as I continued to play it only reinforced it is just how dense this game is there is a lot going on like it I know it sounds kind of cliche and trite because you hear this about a lot of games but it is really true based on what I've seen in cyberpunk that this world the cyberpunk world night city really feels like a living, lived-in place with stuff going on, whether you engage with it or not. Like it just, it really feels like a, a bustling, thriving, dense place. And, you know, con contrasting it with something like The Witcher 3, of course, CD Projekt Red's last game, big game, you know, 100 plus hours, 150 hours, but it's, it's a lot more spread out. Like this game is geographically huge as well, but it's so dense that I think it just has a completely different feel to it than The Witcher does. 
And again, not, not necessarily in a better or worse way, just very different, but it's one that combined with the fact that this is a first person game versus the Witchers being third person games. I, I mean, I'm a sucker for any great first person game. I just love the, the immersion factor and, and really embodying the characters in these worlds. And it just, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, there was there's so much to do there's there's so many options so many choices that i i really felt like like 4 hours was almost a disservice to this game like that's <laughs> that's how that's how much is going on with it yeah, I, I think what struck me about this uh, gameplay demo today, more so than I think the stuff that we've seen before it, is taking a look at Night City, it gives you this like really impressive sense of verticality. And uh, just watching that today, I was wondering how much of that, that verticality is actually um, playable you know for um, in a manner of speaking like how, how much of that uh the the shops and the things that you see up top of night city are places that you can get to things that you can interact with versus the stuff that's on the ground level like are you moving around night city basically on one level or are you traversing up and down throughout the throughout night city well they don't render the floors you can't walk like go to every floor of every building like you can't just go mm -hmm. like all right i'm gonna go to level four and wander around there and talk to the people mm -hmm. in the offices you know it, it will take you between where you need to be like which it, where i started was my office and my the arasaka sort of executive floor and then down to the the basement to get to get uh, in the car on the way out uh, of the beginning of the game but Nevertheless, there there is a lot of of layering going on. You know, there's there is the 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 seediness going on at the like I won't spoil it, but there's a crazy thing that happens in the opening prologue for the the corporate backstory, and then you go, you end up later at back at your apartment, and there's like sort of an urban favela with lots of little shops and food stands, and uh, I saw there was a there was this buff looking bald guy that was sparring with a with a robot training partner and so yeah, i went up and yeah. I'm like well can i can i interact with this and like sure enough i start sparring with the robot and then i i i kick the robot's ass and uh, it's coach fred <laughs> says uh hey uh not bad you wanna you wanna do some some underground fights and you can do the whole you get that oh, turns cool. into a whole quest line if you wanted to it's a side yeah. quest so there, it really That's does funny. just that, that feel was, like uh, there's a lot of personality. There was a there was a boxing side quest in The Witcher Three as well, where you could go around and just <laughs> beat up, you know, uh, locals in in that uh, that game as well. Uh, Seth and, and Matt, I, I kind of have to apologize to you here because obviously Ryan has played the game. I'm going to direct a lot of questions right. his way, but feel free to jump in here with your thoughts on the trailer as well, or ask Ryan well, I, questions as they come up to you. That's what I want to do. Go I ahead. want to ask Ryan a question. Like, uh, yeah, you go brought ahead. up. The immersion of first person. I know a lot of people were surprised that it was first person when it was announced. Uh, do you think Cyberpunk benefits from the the perspective as opposed to like a third person that they're known for? I do, uh, and and I think a lot of that there there is plenty of shooting that will go on. I I wouldn't call it a first person shooter. I mean, you do first person shooting, and you can do plenty of it if you want to. But this is uh, to to me the the game that I most closely would would analogize cyberpunk 2077 to isn't the witcher isn't i don't know what some of the other ones that may have been brought up but it's deus ex and specifically the original deus ex the original one from the that actually just turned 20 this week from war inspector which was this just absolute legendary first ballot hall of fame kind of game which really pioneered a lot of the emergent gameplay go anywhere, alter your quest lines, you know, based on your choices. And it also had shooting and it had, ha excuse me, hacking, just like I just did. Uh, and <laughs> it's yeah, super, getting meta here for you. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's very much to me a, it, it is the next evolution of something like Deus Ex. And I say that it with full and full compliments. Like I, if, if you don't like Deus Ex, sorry that if you don't like that comparison, but I mean it in the most flattering way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Deus Ex is uh, you know like a pretty prime example of one of the earlier uh, immersive sims, and obviously Cyberpunk is borrowing a lot from that too. I, I think my concern for this game is that you know from a company that is traditionally a third person sword and board uh, RPG sort of developer. Um, 
looking at the first person gunplay, I thought like, Hey, that looks really great. Like it really looks like a great first person shooter as well as an RPG. Uh, Ryan, you're a real halo guy. Obviously, you know, a thing or two about first person shooters. Um, how does the gunplay feel? Does it live up to first person shooter expectations or is it more of a fallout three and four situation where it's an RPG that has guns? I probably, my honest answer at this point would be somewhere in between the two examples you mm -hmm. just gave. And what I would, what I would note is a couple of things. One, uh, is that I didn't actually get to do a ton of combat. That's, and that's mm -hmm. not a complaint against the game. Again, it's, there's so much that happens. And a lot of what I was doing was just building and building and building on the first major quest, which I actually only ended up accomplishing the first major leg of, uh, in the mm -hmm. four hours that I had, it's a lot of dialogue. It's a lot of just traveling from place to place, talking. There wasn't act. I didn't actually get to do a ton of combat, which was a shame because the way I want to play Cyberpunk is the same way that I played Deus Ex and System Shock Two before that, uh, which is I you know it, if a game allows me some ways to subvert the system rather than just shoot my way through it. I like to take those subversive options. So I put points into hacking uh, and into uh, stealth, and I but I just mm -hmm. didn't really get to test those out. Like you can you can hack cameras and get them to distract enemies or just shut off so you can sneak through. And and I had one skill that I'd chosen that al that allowed me to it would just unlock all the doors in an area so I could just go wherever I wanted to and sneak right on by. And I just didn't really get to test a lot of that stuff. And then the other mm -hmm. caveat I just would want to add is we were, we were playing on PC through a streaming service uh, for obviously mm -hmm. security's sake that this is a however many hundred million dollars this game cost that uh, they didn't want to send out physical code and, and have me playing it. So uh, I streamed it through the cloud and, it, and actually that worked remarkably well, but for whatever reason, maybe they're still tuning control stuff. They actually requested that all the previewers, in fact, they required all of the previewers to play on a gamepad, even though we were on PC. So I just plugged in my Xbox mm -hmm. gamepad. I would have very much preferred to play mouse and keyboard if I'm at my PC. So the I, I hesitate to, to put too much of a judgment on the feel of the shooting because... You know, I, I feel like that's still being tuned, that's still in flux, and that's something that mm -hmm. is going to have to wait for me to really uh, give a, a, a more confident answer in. It, it's interesting. It's an interesting preview uh, for a lot of reasons, right? Like the idea of, of a streaming preview is obviously a very strange thing to have to deal with, but also when you're playing a game that is guaranteed to be over a hundred hours easy uh, and you're, you're given four hours and you're cut loose at the very beginning. Uh, I can imagine that it would be pretty easy to get sidetracked, pretty easy to, to, you know, only be involved in the story stuff. So I can definitely see right. how, how you wouldn't have an opportunity to get to in, you know, in your preview and here you mentioned you didn't get to try a lot of the hacking. It sounds like you didn't do a ton of combat. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm interested to, to hear Miranda and Paris, who we had on our pre and post show, if they had an opportunity to play the game a little differently, you know, I'd like to talk to them and see more about that. Uh, but speaking of uh, playing the game, I did want to throw a question out to Matt and Seth. Uh, when Cyberpunk does come out later this year, November 19th, I believe is the, is the date. Correct. Um, ha, huh, nailed it. Uh, it's almost as if I'm hosting a show or something. Um, uh -huh. How are you guys going to play this game? What's your plan? Are you going to go, uh, are you going to, you know, start off in the Badlands? Are you going to start in the corporate towers? Like what, what's your, what's your ideal style of play for Cyberpunk 2077? Let's start with you, Seth. Well, I am going to be a corporate man. I'm going to put uh -huh. all my skills into, into spreadsheets. Uh, I am going to be the, the businessman that I always wanted to be in the future. Yeah, it's, I'm, uh, that's probably sounds extremely not boring. Even a joke. What you just described. It's exactly <laughs> more like what are you talking cheese. about? Have you yeah. ever set up a VLOOKUP formula in mm -hmm. Excel? Come on now. Uh, uh, don't worry, you guys. I just want to shout out to the chat that Seth won't be joining us anymore on this show. He's got <laughs> uh, Matt Kim. Uh, uh, yeah. What What are you, you thinking? Fully... Of, what are you thinking for this game? I wonder if you can fully role play like a nine to five desk jockey in cyberpunk you know just do that like you just don't involve hours. yourself in the in the Don't actual story anything. of the game exactly you just, you just go to work 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You clock Answering in, you clock emails. out. Everything. Yeah, just do that. And no, uh, I will probably do the uh, what Street Samurai. Uh, probably uh-huh. the most. I, it sounds to me like the the true neutral option, which is kind of where I want to start. You know, like get a feel for the world before before making some decisions. Uh, mm-hmm. Like the Badlands are cool. Corporate is eh, right? But mm-hmm. let's uh, let's start in the streets. Let's see let's see where to build up your character from there. You know. Yeah, I mean, if history has taught me anything, it, it's that the Badlands are always uh, a, a bad op- opportunity in a post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. game. I feel like, you know, it seems it to me bad. like that's where, that's where all the worst stuff happens. Yeah, um, it's right in the name. So yeah, uh, I, I'm definitely thinking about doing Street Samurai myself. I feel like the true neutral option is is uh, I want to be able to make choices depending on how I actually feel. That's how I play any RPG is like, mm. what what does my gut say? Not necessarily like, what would this character do in this instance? Because when you're role playing, I feel like you're playing, you know, you can play as yourself, you can play as a different character. I always choose to err mm. on the side of like, what would I do in these situations? So that's probably right. where I'm leaning. Um, Ryan, do you feel in your opportunity uh to play this week did you did you get a sense of uh lethal versus non-lethal runs is there an option to do non-lethal runs i know you said you didn't mess with too much of the combat but are you just like killing dudes from the start or is there an opportunity to do like trank darts or knockouts or something like that well i'm not i'm not entirely sure how far it'll go but yeah what there there's a uh, stealth combat tutorial and you can go uh there's an option to just knock people out or to act to lethally take them down uh, in in stealth. So it does seem like the game will support that to some extent. Yeah, I think that that's probably the route that I'll go. I don't feel like I necessarily like in a game that is already like hyper violent and hyper sexualized. I'm not sure that I necessarily need to do uh, a lot of killing right out of the gate. Uh, we did have a question that I wanted to ask you from uh, the comments section on IGN, uh, Ryan, from Doctor Penguin. Yeah. He says. Can anyone speak to augments in this game? It looks like you can't play the game without augments? Question mark. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you do, you do, you are required to get. There's, you go to the Ripper Dock, is the the sort right. of in universe name for it, to get your first two. And uh, yeah, that's a good question. Of if if you'll have to get more after that, uh, the first one's a thing for your hand, and then uh, one for your eye that lets you kind of scan stuff and and see certain things so yeah, yeah that i'm not sure of it's a it's an interesting sounds question. like sounds like dr penguin might want to do like a real hard mode run right where you're not implementing augments kind of like a yeah. dark souls no armor run or something like that that's a, right. that's an interesting take for sure uh also uh he <laughs> another question here from uh unknown four by four on ign.com uh cyberpunk versus blade runner which is going to have the better anime what do you guys think <laughs> <laughs> Well, Blade Runner Zach, you, were, good. You, were, you were talking about you're a fan of uh, Studio Trigger, right? So you could speak mm-hmm. you can speak to what they're capable of. I think the yeah, I mean, Studio Trigger is one of the most legendary anime studios, you know, ever. Uh, and I think that that a cyberpunk game from Studio Trigger is like I, I'm I'm a fan of I wouldn't call myself like necessarily an anime fan, but I'm a I'm a very big fan of some anime. And I think Studio Trigger is one of those studios that is definitely that that, you know, that kind of studio that supersedes the 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 genre the tropes right and mm-hmm. and having them do a cyberpunk game seems super super cool to me so i'm very stoked for that but the blade runner anime was really cool i did really like the way that they told that story uh sort of a prequel to blade runner 2049 underrated mm-hmm. cyberpunk film uh ryan what else can you tell us about this preview what else do you feel like people need to know about cyberpunk 2077 coming out of today's event um i mean the really it's it's uh what it seems to be really good at is not just having concrete A or B choices. Uh, it seems mm-hmm. like every every path you start to go down, there will be opportunities to double cross the person that you'd previously made a deal with, or or go veer off and go do it a do the the quest a totally different way. There's it seems like there's going to be a lot of opportunity to really personalize your experience and uh cd project reds already talked about multiple endings to this game so i don't know quite how Mm -hmm. how what the extent of that will be but that's the the really exciting part to me is that that we're really we're not going to have you and i are not going to have the same experience like it's going to be your own adventure 
And they seem to have really spent a lot of time uh, making sure that, that that's going to be possible and that's going to be a, a feel like a very organic way to play the game. And, and so, yeah, I just kind of can't wait to see, like when I, I'll, I'll, I don't know when I'll play it next, whether I'll get another preview opportunity or whether I'll play it just as the, the final release. But like, I, I'm def, I definitely want to make different choices and, and sort of start to see how it, how it varies and where, where it starts to veer off. Yeah. I'm interested to see that as well. I mean, CD Projekt Red, uh, masterful storytellers. Obviously, they took their game up a notch with The Witcher. Tons of different story paths and endings there. Uh, super interesting to hear your impressions, and thanks for uh, sharing your cyberpunk knowledge with us here, Ryan, after playing upwards of 44 hours of the game. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Very good preview. Uh, guys, we've got to take a quick break, but we'll be right back after this to talk about something that I know that Chad is excited about because I can tell they haven't been listening to any of this cyberpunk stuff and only want to talk about Xbox versus PS5. So we're going to talk a little bit about <laughs> what Xbox uh, uh, upgrades mean for Series X when we come back right after this. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and iGen is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Welcome back to News, Games, and More, part of IGN Summer of Gaming. If you're just joining us, make sure to check us out on TikTok for some bonus Summer of Gaming content, and consider giving one to one of our two charities, the Bail Project or the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Response Fund. You can do that by heading to donate.ign.com or clicking the links in the video description. Uh, Cyberpunk isn't the only thing that's happening today. Uh, we also somewhat quietly got a bit of Xbox Series X news as well, uh, and I wanted to talk to our cast about what it means uh, for games to be Series X optimized. So today in an Xbox Wire blog post, it's explained that games that are optimized for Series X um, have been either natively designed or fully rebuilt for Series X. Uh, brand new games built natively include Halo Infinite and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, while enhanced games include games like Gears 5, uh, additional games like that. So Ryan, once again, you're the star of the show here today as our Xbox <laughs> boy. Uh, Sorry. What can you tell us about Series X optimization? That's okay. Matt and Seth are going to get their chance to talk about all kinds of stuff somewhere down the line. But right now I want to throw it to you first to tell us a little bit about this uh, Xbox Series X. Yeah, so it's this was really this is really about Microsoft kind of hammering home their the 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 benefits of Series X, which I think from sort of a 10,000 foot view as somebody who's been covering Xbox for several generations of it now, this is something that they really did poorly with the Xbox One 
you know, they, they were on the defensive from right from the go with the whole TV, TV, TV thing. And it was, it was all, it was always about what that console couldn't do. You know, you couldn't share games with your friends because the whole digital initiative up front and all that. So this time around, they've clearly taken notes on, on what went wrong and they've been doing a much better job of just reinforcing the benefits, the good things that the next generation of Xbox is going to do with the Series X. And we've heard recently uh, about smart delivery and kind of what they've, you know, how they're, how they're doing that. And now today here, a new blog, plus we had an interview on Next Gen Console Watch, which aired live earlier uh, on IGN, but it will be up, it, it must either be up now or it'll be up first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, on demand on IGN or YouTube, if you do want to see that interview with Jason Ronald, the uh, the uh, one of the the higher up folks in the Series X project. So optimization is is really that. It's basically just it is a game that is taking advantage of one of the new next gen feature, one or more of the new next gen features that the Series X has, whether it's the super fast loading times with the NVMe SSD hard drive, whether it's DirectX ray tracing, whether it's the Xbox velocity architecture, et cetera, et cetera. And so far they put up, so I'll read you the list real quick. The list is getting longer of Series X optimized titles that we have so far. And even in alphabetical order, thanks Microsoft, we've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla taking advantage a full advantage of the hardware. Bright Memory Infinite, which I think was probably my favorite game from that uh, somewhat otherwise disappointing May showcase, <laughs> the third party showcase from Xbox. Bright Memory Infinite is the one that's being made by one person, if you remember one that person. first person yep. shooter. Uh, Call of the Sea, which was super cool art, really great art style on that. Kind of gave me, kind of reminded me of uh, like The Witness meets Rhyme meets, I don't know, some other first person game, but. Uh, now, sort of a first-person exploration puzzle game, et cetera. Ryan, yes. If I could, if I could interrupt you, I'm sorry. As much as I love Please. this, I do want to ask. I do want to ask <laughs> Matt and and Seth what this means to them. What are we thinking about this Series X optimization? Where does that put you in the great Xbox versus PS5 debate? Are you guys getting both? Are you guys still choosing between one or the other? Seth, why don't we start with you? Oh yeah, no, I'm getting the the Xbox first, and then I'll get a PS5 uh, probably the next year because you know what that means. Two Christmases Deal. locked in. Boom. Oh. Best, best dad <laughs> right. ever. Double win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice move. Mm -hmm. What about you, Matt? Thank you. I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm actually probably currently on the opposite track of Seth. I might pick up the PS5 first only because I want to play Demon Souls more. Outrageous. Sorry. And then I'll probably pick up a Series X afterwards. But, I mean, you know, they'll both be there in my home eventually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, guys, nope. we got to take another quick break. We'll be back right after this. We got some sad news coming up. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the fallout from what happens when uh, what happened when Mixer got shut down earlier this week. Uh, stick around. We'll be back right after this. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and iGen is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. 
you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. And we're back. Uh, earlier this week, we got a bit of bad news when we heard that streaming service Mixer would be shutting down. Uh, I know I teased this before the break, but I, I, I did want to talk a little bit about what Mixer shutdown means, what the fallout of that looks like. And for that, I'm going to go to our Mixer expert, Ryan McCaffrey. No, I'm just kidding. Ryan, you've done <laughs> enough on this show. I actually want to, <laughs> I actually want to toss it over. To, I actually want to toss it over to Matt Kim. Matt, can you tell us a little bit about what this Mixer shutdown means? Yeah, so uh, for people who might not know, Mixer was Microsoft's own, uh, for lack of a better word, Twitch competitor. It was a streaming service. Mm -hmm. uh, people could play games there. They designed it specifically to take Twitch head on, and they couldn't. You know, the the numbers were just just weren't there. Uh, Mixer's growth mm -hmm. was slow, even compared even compared to companies like Facebook and YouTube, which also had yeah similar Actually uh, streaming options. Oh. I actually have some stats here. If I can cut in here, I'll just interrupt you real Please. quick. Like Mixer's yearly growth from April last year came in at around 0.2%, while places like Facebook Gaming and Twitch had large spikes in viewership. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, you know, Mixer tried to get Ninja and Shroud in the mix, uh, coming over from Twitch uh, using uh, just a ton of money to try to lure them over, and uh, truck, little yeah. to no avail. You know, Matt, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to read out some of those stats. Go, go on. No, they're super helpful because they they like contextualize. Like Mixer had a lot going for it technology wise. It was a lot of people praised how smooth it was compared to compared to Twitch. How uh, some of the community options were were there were better than Twitch's. But even at the end of the day, it just couldn't compete. And Microsoft ultimately decided that it was better to give up in this particular streaming race against Twitch than continue with Mixer. And that's what they did. They decided to sell off its assets to Facebook. Uh, their streamers that were under exclusive contracts with Mixer were free, freed from those contracts. And some of them were given, you know, hey, if you move along to Facebook along with the rest of the Mixer stuff, you will have preferential, like, fast pass. Uh, what, I, what, what do they call it on Facebook? The exalted leader status on Facebook? No. Uh, Exalted leader <laughs> yeah, status. Watch it. Be careful. Yeah. No, they were given. They, but yeah, line. they were given. Uh, uh, you know, promotional benefits for joining Facebook if they wanted to. They weren't obligated to, though. But that's essentially it. You know, uh, Microsoft lost the streaming race to Twitch. Right, and I think the real controversy here is that you know the outside of the people losing their jobs. Like obviously that's a real tough break for a lot of people. Um, but there's just a tremendous amount of money being, uh, you know, handed out to not handed out, but like full-time contracts were paid out to people like, uh, shroud and like Ninja, you know, and so mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of an insane thing to see such a huge amount of money go to somebody when things are being closed down. Right. I think that's the real issue. Uh, Seth, did you, uh, did you spend any time on Mixer? Do you have any, uh, do you have any preferential, uh, uh, or do you prefer a streaming service over the other is, is, were you, were you surprised to hear about Mixer getting shut down? I was surprised to hear about Mixer getting shut down so abruptly. I was not surprised that it got shut down though. I don't think it ever really gained a foothold um twitch is just so ubiquitous for streaming like everything mm -hmm. i mean you can watch bob ross on twitch i have watched mm -hmm. hours of that happy little man painting photos or uh painting paintings rather to be a, uh, continue to be a strange dude i really like that about you seth go on and no problem man um i just i i i think the name mixer just isn't that great <laughs> I think it's confusing. I mean, I'm not saying Twitch Im immediately mm -hmm. okay. makes you think of streaming, but Twitch has been around long enough that that is what you associate. Mixer sounds like, oh, hey, uh, you sure. know, like, uh, like, a, like, we're going to our Christian camp and we're going to have a mixer to meet everybody uh, well, the first was, night. It changed names. I remember the, the, the first name for it being better, but now I can't remember what the first name was. It It was something else before Mixer. Oh, yeah, I, that's I don't right. remember that. I don't remember I that either, now. Ryan, but, but you are right. Actually, before you look that up, it was called Beam. I'm hearing from our, our producers that it was called Thank Beam. You. Wait, no, that's not it. that's not better. No, that's actually worse. Uh, <laughs> I, I like it. I think that I think it's better. No, Ryan, I don't think um, that's good. 
as a longtime Xbox and Microsoft, uh, you know, reporter, essentially, uh, is this a surprising move for Microsoft? Do you feel like they have a history of uh, cutting and running on things that aren't working for them? They, I mean, they will. I mean, look at let's they, they've they've certainly had plenty of projects over the years that they've invested a ton of money into that don't pan out that they eventually kill off. I mean, Zune is probably the most high profile Oof. one, which was you know their attempt to compete with the iPod, and that didn't work. And on a smaller scale, uh, some four of you out there may remember that the Xbox 360 had an add-on HD DVD player for about five. It's minutes. in my basement. Right now, with my <laughs> I'm not surprised, Seth. I'm not surprised, but, but yeah, I mean, Seth I, you know, also every still company... uses his Dune every day, so that's that. You're right; that isn't surprising at all. Seth, the last well, I got the Zune tattoos, fan. though. Yeah, <laughs> even even Apple had the Newton, right? Every company tries stuff. Nobody is has a 100 percent success rate, and mm -hmm. you know, sometimes even a good product. Because I'm not, I don't, I don't think anybody would sit here and say Mixer was a bad platform a bad product that just you know there there are other forces at work i mean you know it's timing is part of it and and what the competition is doing and yeah it's, it's just mixer just couldn't couldn't up its numbers uh to keep up with with its competitors yeah it's it's a sad story i mean nobody likes to see anything get shuttered right like nobody wants to see anybody lose their jobs and it's it's definitely a a bummer to hear that kind of stuff happening and and when it happens on such a large scale as something like mixer you know we knew a lot of good folks that were working there and it's it's uh you know it's an unfortunate it's an unfortunate turn um we got to take a quick break. We're going to try to come back with some, maybe some better news. Uh, we're going to talk about Disneyland coming up after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. News, games, and more is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Everybody loves watching a speed run of their favorite game. But what if you got the opportunity to peek into the minds of the developers while they watch their games getting completely wrecked? That's exactly what happens in every episode of Game Devs React to speedruns. Yeah, you can do that. Oh my god! Yeah. We invite you to ride along with the developers as they react to, question, and enjoy some of the most skilled players exploiting and speeding through a game it took years of their life to create. Join us every Saturday for a new episode. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and iGen is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Welcome back to News, Games, and More. I hope you took that break opportunity to uh, donate or send us a yap or something. We've really been asking very nicely this whole episode. Remember, you can do that any old time. Uh, this is going to be our last segment, and the last thing that we want to talk about, as we are News, Games, and More, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Disneyland, specifically about Splash Mountain. Uh, Disney is actually going to replace Splash Mountain with a Dis uh, Princess and the Frog attraction uh, after fan petitions have um, come out successful, essentially. Uh, Disney announced uh, today that Disneyland and Disney World theme park attraction Splash Mountain will soon have a complete reimagining uh, as a new attraction based on an animated film, The Princess and the Frog. Uh, so Disney says in their explanation, this approach to re-theming or plussing attractions at Walt Disney uh, begins with Imagineers asking the question, 
How can we build upon or elevate the experience to make it fresh and relevant? Um, who wants to talk about uh, maybe what's really going on here with Splash Mountain specifically? Uh, I think that there's probably some uh, underlying tones and underlying things that, that are, are happening beyond this decision. Obviously, fans have created this petition because Splash Mountain, based on the Song of the South, an extremely Ooh. outdated and racist film, right? Um, Yikes. Ryan, you're a, you're a big Disney man. Uh, how do you feel about Splash Mountain getting changed and, and honestly, like going back and, and switching these things out as they become culturally irrelevant? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm totally for this. And, and I will say that is Splash Mountain is my favorite Disney attraction, period. I, I've mm -hmm. always loved that ride. It's, it's my number one. When I, when I go down that big drop at the end, like I, it doesn't matter how, if I was feeling anything less than super happy before that, I always come down that thing with a smile on my face. It, I, I love that ride so much, but it's, it's not, I don't love the, the talking, singing animals inside. I love the ride and, and it's, yeah, this is, this is not a thing that, that needs to, to have this association to this completely mothballed for good reason movie anymore. And what's, what I love about this is not only great, let's move on from that. Like it's, it's, it's still going to, it's most likely still going to be, if not the exact same ride, very close to it, because that's like, you look at, uh, they're retheming it the same way that the tower of terror in California adventure was rethemed to guardians of the galaxy. It's the same ride just with a completely different theme and, and uh, vibe to it. And going with Princess and the Frog, not only is a chance to add uh, a little just more inclusivity to the park, but it actually, in Disneyland, I can't speak for Disney World, but in Disneyland, it makes thematic sense because it's it basically, ex, uh, it's next to New Orleans Square, and then the mm -hmm. Haunted Mansion, like uh, it all sort of fits in that Bayou, New Orleans, Louisiana kind of kind of vibe. So it, it even it's it's an organic fit, like geographically within the park, which is just like a nice bonus on top of on top of what they're doing with the ride. So you know the ride is still probably going to be the same super fun thing it's always been, and and I welcome the chance to for them to have like new animation, lighting, and all sorts of like twenty first century. Disney Imagineering tech on the inside of the ride mm -hmm. as you go through it. So I'm really eager to see it. Yeah, Disney did say in their statement, the retheming of Splash Mountain is of particular importance today. The new concept is inclusive, one that all of our guests can connect with and be inspired by. And it speaks to the diversity of the millions of people that visit our parks each year. Matt, uh, you surprised by this move from Disney at all? I mean, Song of the South is a film that is, uh, you know, yeah. constantly derided. And honestly, we were talking a little bit before the show started, like none of us have ever seen it. It's been in the Disney, you know, not yeah. even in the vault, but like banished below. Like, what, what do you think about all this? I, I'm a young guy and uh, Song of the South was already, I don't know, just completely ignored by Disney to the point where when I first went to Disneyland, I actually didn't even know it was connected to that movie at all. Right. Uh, because of how little Disney talks about that film from the 50s or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, this is obviously a good move. It's going to have better songs. Uh, Princess and Frog has great songs, <laughs> and it's whatever whatever song they decide to add in to replace the one that's already on there is going to be just better by default, only because I like the music in Princess and Frog to begin with. So It's an interesting point you make. I hope they have the villain one. It I, I've not seen the princess and the frog, so I, I can't speak to that song, but I imagine it goes a little something like the, no, just kidding. I'm not going to sing. It's an interesting point you made Matt there about how people don't realize what this ride is based on. And actually, uh, uh Luigi Tornado, our good friend over on IGN.com says, the thousands of people who ride Splash Mountain every day have no idea what this movie is based on. Disney has done a good job rebranding the content of that movie to exclude any mention of Uncle Remus. And I think that that kind of hits the nail on the head, right? Like a lot of, lot of folks don't know that when they're participating in this ride, when they're riding this ride, they're seeing something that is based on 
basically something that everybody, including Disney themselves, has been like, eh, we should probably kind of sweep this <laughs> under the rug, right? Seth, uh, you also not seen The Princess and the Frog. In fact, you told us before the not. show that you haven't seen any Disney film since 19 Dickety 2 as an old man yourself. So I'm mm-hmm. curious to you, um, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, what uh, what kind of ride would you make out of Splash Mountain? What Disney property would you retheme uh, for Splash Mountain? Oh, man. I'm really putting it on the spot would, here. That would uh, okay. So the um, the uh, the wildebeest stampede from Lion King, and okay. they're somehow virtual reality chasing you down without the like horror of watching your father killed by your uncle. Mm-hmm. That's what? yeah, like very good. Thank you. Yeah, you can tell I put really a lot of one. thought. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted well, to point I mean, out, by the way. That I was today years old when I found out that Splash Mountain was based on the Song of the South. And I have ridden <laughs> Splash Mountain, and I did not know well, that is, that was... This is just pro- further proving Matt's point, right? Like, I, I think yeah. that Matt kind of hit the nail on the head there. There are a lot of people that know that it is based on Song of the South, and they say, like, hey, this is a bad look. But there are yeah. way, way more people that don't know that and don't understand that, that you know, where that... that those songs and those characters came from and what the history is there. Kind of surprising that when that, that ride opened, cause I remember I'm old enough that I remember when that ride opened in the parks, uh, we're looking at the jungle cruise. Now that was uh, just a quick flash that was from the future. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I remember when that ride opened and, uh, the, the, even at that point, like I feel like Disney had already swept that movie under the rug. So it was a little surprising to me to hear later as a kid, like, Oh yeah, this is a bad film that this ride is based on. Um, you saw that come up on Twitter there. Uh, that tweet come up. It looks like this is sort of breaking news here. It looks like uh, Twitter has also jumped onto uh, this this particular story to push for the Jungle Cruise to be remade as well. Uh, in an update to our article on IGN, uh, reacting to Thursday's announcement that Disney Splash Mountain is being changed into the Princess and Frog attraction, many social media users, including celebrities, are calling on Disney parks to update, retheme, or outright remove other attractions and rides that are offensive and outdated, including insensitive depictions of indigenous peoples, including the Jungle Cruise, which I think is totally viable, right? Like now is the time to start looking at these places and making these changes. Ryan, you you go to Disneyland probably more than any of us on this panel. I think you were the first person that I knew that went to uh, Galaxy's Edge and came back to the office swinging your lightsaber around. Um, <laughs> but I did, I did want to ask you, uh, maybe not for the same reasons as these parks or, or these attractions are being talked about, but are there any par- uh, particular rides that you think are overdue for uh, a, you know, a redo, right? Like we, I know that uh, Star not, uh, Star Tours has gotten a, a facelift and also Space Mountain has right. gotten a Star Wars uh, a reclass. So w- what other rides do you want to see uh, uh, get the same kind of treatment? Maybe not this same exact kind of treatment, but you know what I'm saying. Right. I mean, if, if I were in charge, I mean, I think Tomorrowland needs to be like completely raised and redone with, again, <laughs> with, with seriously, like, with 21st century, like cutting edge Disney Imagineering tech, like there's, there's only really one, and it's Star, Star Tours too. If you count it, like Space Mountain's really the only thing over there that's that's like mm. Tomorrowland. That's it. Um, yeah. It's it's like sort of this concrete jungle over there. Um, it's it's you know there's the Toy Story uh, or rather the the Buzz Lightyear rides wedged in there across from Star Tours, and then there's uh, I don't know how Autopia. If you go over by Autopia. It it reeks of gasoline and exhaust. I don't know how they haven't <laughs> converted those to elect to electric go karts that are quiet yeah. and don't put out any pollution. Like I seriously, I would I would scrap I would close Tomorrowland and and hand it over to the Imagineers and say, what is the next fifty years of this look like? Let's start mm-hmm. over and really make it a new Tomorrowland. So that that's the first place I would go. That's an interesting Yesterday choice because I. Like- yeah. <laughs> Very good, Seth. Right. Well done. Thank uh, you. I, I kind of like the retro futuristic look of Tomorrowland. I like that it is a the world of the future, but <laughs> seen through the lens of the past, right? Like it is a very right. uh, kind of funny looking uh, uh, 
area of the park. Uh, mm-hmm. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are out of time for this week's episode, uh, or this <laughs> this week, today's <laughs> episode of News, Games, and More. We'll actually be back tomorrow at 4 p.m., the standard News, Games, and More time for News, Games, and you guessed it, more. But stay tuned for a special episode of Up at Noon, uh, Up at Noon at 5. In this week's episode, Brian and Max learn a thing or two about friendship. And remember, next Aww. Tuesday, June 30th at 3 p.m., IGN's Summer of Gaming Awards and After Party presented by Fuser right here. You can check it out. Uh, come back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific for more go- no, more news, more goos, more names, and more <laughs> more. Until then, I'm Zach Ryan. That's my friend Seth Macy. Over there is Matt Kim, and that's always Ryan McCaffrey. So long, stay safe, and take care. Bye, everybody. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and IGN is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. Everybody loves watching a speed run of their favorite game. But what if you got the opportunity to peek into the minds of the developers while they watch their games getting completely wrecked? That's exactly what happens in every episode of Game Devs React to speedruns. Yeah, you can do that. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> we invite you to ride along with the developers as they react to, question, and enjoy some of the most skilled players exploiting and speeding through a game it took years of their life to create. Join us every Saturday for a new episode. Hey there, if you have opinions on games, movies, TV, or other weird stuff on the internet, you can take part in our new show, Power Ranking, where you can vote on all your favorite things on the internet. Go Do it now. It. Do it. Just go. Do vote. it. Go vote. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. See you there. Oh, hey! it's the Who's boys. Hey, you. I don't know. It's a, that's actually, I think, what happens when you drive a truck over a saxophone. <laughs> um, I think, hello, I think this is the cool new. Oh, you go ahead. And I was going to make a Sex in the City joke, but you, I was going to say that's what if they made Sex in the City, but with 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 two awful men rather than four OK women. Yeah, that's what you, know, you, you stopped can, the you intro for. Your, yeah, you can read. You can read your lines. Fine. Yeah, that's like a Go steamroller going on. over a saxophone, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, hello and welcome to Up at Noon, IGN's sometimes weekly off-topic variety show that's occasionally funny on purpose and uh, other times sounds like a small car accident between a Zamboni and a raccoon. Uh, <laughs> we just found it's actually the number one show ever, which is we're really happy about. We just got that call just a few minutes ago. That's great news. Uh, I'm your host, Brian Altano. That's Max Scoville right there. My number two, as they say... You know what that means? Yeah, he but no, you heard him, you heard him right. Hey, well, you cool it with the poopies. Uh, but no, you heard him right. We actually just got the results in from the um, the institute, and they said that Up at Noon is the number one show ever. So suck it, Breaking Bad, go to hell, The Wire, eat our dust, Wheel of Fortune, okay, see you I in hell, America's right. Funniest Home Video, and suck it, Paw Patrol. What is that? I, they don't tell us about uh, these things. Yeah, that's I I um I forgot to tell you I had a I had another child and that's Benny and he's very sick. Um, anyway, before we get started doing what we do better than everyone else in the entire world, especially you, Wheel of Fortune, a little housekeeping. Uh, you probably heard this before, but you can help support some awesome charities by hitting the links in your video descriptions or visiting donate.ign.com. That's donate.ign.com. 
Take it away, Max. We are raising money for the World Health Organization's COVID-19 response fund dedicated to studying, tracking, and combating that no-good coronavirus, as well as the Bail Project, a nonprofit that pays bail for people in need, reuniting families, and restoring the presumption of innocence. That's right. Uh, so go follow IGN on TikTok and check out our Summer of Gaming content and head over to IGN.com and leave us a Yappa video comment, and we will show that. That's uh, that's the easiest way to get your videos on IGN without making an entire video game and having us review it. So really, that's that's a cheat code right there. Yeah, um, yeah. Max, this this morning has this has been a really long, insanely crazy summer, but also this day specifically was bonkers and started bright and early with some cyberpunk stuff. Tell me about it. Yeah, so I mean, Night City Wire happened this morning. We got a ton of uh, new looks at Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, there's a bunch of really cool stuff happening there. I like obviously this game is huge. People are crazy excited for it. I've been looking forward to this game for most of my career, which is weird to think about. And uh, I'm pretty happy we've actually got something special to show off on on Up at Noon right now that has to do with Cyberpunk 2077. Um, there's a company called Pure Arts who sent us some amazing uh, statues based on Assassin's Creed a few weeks ago. They have some 1-6 scale collectibles. So like, you know, 12 inch, don't call them dolls. They're action figures, dolls. Um, and, and they're putting out a uh, Yaiba Kusanagi motorcycle that's in scale with these. Here is a world premiere 360 view of this, this bitch and bike, um, which is very clearly like this totally, you know, has some has some notes of Kaneda's motorcycle from Akira. Um, but yeah, this yeah. was first shown off in game in the, I think I saw it in the E3 demo they showed, but it's one of the many, you know, cool wheeled vehicles you get to you get to tear ass around Night City on. Um, yeah, this was shown in the uh, E3 demo that we, that the press saw behind closed doors last year in like the 30 minute demo. Um, and yeah, straight up Akira. This is like, I, this thing is gorgeous, man. This is like super, super cool looking. I'm, I immediately was like, you know, I, I love, I love statue stuff, but something like this was uh, immediately hit me as like, okay, I want that on my shelf. Cause I know I can pick it up and interact with it and play with it a little bit. Well, I have some bad news. If you want it on your shelf, it's going to cost you a pretty penny because this is a high end collectible. Uh, basically, they put out a couple of uh, different action figures of V. There's, um, they're you know hyper articulated, super realistic, uh, twelve inch figures with like cloth clothes and like interchangeable hands and all that. Uh, and the figures they make one of uh, you know one V female version. Here's a look at the, is that the pants? What is that? The knees? That's the boot. I can't even tell. Those are the boots. Is that the, the boots, boots, my friend? Is that the big yeah, boots. That is, Those that are is good the big boots. boots. Um, but yeah, so they've got the uh, the two figures. They've got you know V female, V male, which is. I, I feel like we're going to have a lot of just like the, the, uh, how do you describe your character in that? But there's, there's the boots anyway. Um, so if you want to get the motorcycle, uh, it is 599 and it comes packed with one of the figures. So if you want, you know, the male figure, uh, and the bike, it's 600 bucks. Uh, the figures by themselves individually are $229. Uh, and then there is the, um, the ultimate pack where you can have V male and v V female and the motorcycle as well, which is seven hundred ninety nine dollars, which is extremely expensive in terms of there's the there's the male figure there. I love the sneakers on that. They really got this. Yeah, sort of right. Not quite Chuck Taylor's down right there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are. I mean, this is two hundred twenty nine bucks is a stupid amount of money to pay for a toy, but when you look at sort of the price of high end twelve inch action figures, that's pretty reasonable. Um, and then when you start looking at the price of vehicles and stuff, it, it gets it gets pretty wacky pretty fast. So I, you know, 600 bucks for a limited edition high-end collectible of these guys is, uh, that's, I think that's pretty par for the course. Um, yeah, honestly, but, you know, the, the quality is phenomenal. I think like we were like kind of laughing when we were looking at the boots before, but that is just a extreme zoom in on one corner of what these figures look like. Um, and the accessories and sort of articulation to them is gorgeous. Like this is, this is on par with some of the most high end collectibles you can get. And the thing is like, to be, to be blunt, like a lot of video game collectibles aren't usually that great looking, like usually you get some stuff that's packed in with a collector's edition, like a statue. And that's sort of like, mm -hmm. Um, a good way to sort of offset the cost cost of everything, and maybe they're throwing some like keychains and tokens and stuff like that. But like these figures are incredibly detailed, and this is like one of those things where I'm still I still don't know. Like I haven't played this game yet. People on IGN staff have played it today. We've got tons of impressions all over the site, so please go check those out. We've got written reviews, our previews. We have um, conversations on YouTube, uh, video previews, and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, we spent mm -hmm. a significant amount of time with it. I haven't played this yet. I don't know. I, this could be like a game I completely fall in love with, and I could go from being like, oh, I don't really need this stuff, to being like, I have to have this on my shelf. So, yeah, you're, like, you're kind of... 
you're like kind of hard to track in terms of like what grabs you. You know, I know that you mm -hmm. like big open world games, but like RPGs can kind of go either way with you. So this is this yep. will be interesting. Um, that being said, if you are looking for cyberpunk action figures, collectibles that are a little bit more affordable, uh, McFarlane Toys has the license for seven inch scale action figures. I did an unboxing of those back in the before times when we could go to our office. Um, but I did the, uh, I was like the, the seven inch, uh, male V and then two different versions of Johnny Silverhand, which are, uh, pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, those, you are, know, those are like just on Amazon right now, actually, if you if you're yeah. itching for something, if you've been watching preview coverage all day and you want toys on your shelf, you can grab those immediately. Um, yeah. And yet, st strap uh, I, in, which you can't do on a motorcycle, because we're going to be talking about collectibles a lot today. Uh, which yeah, is we're great, gonna, this is this is the show where the adult men talk about the dolls and the toys and whatnot. Um, let's see. What do we have? We actually have some more stuff in Pure Arts to talk about. Uh, did I hear a whisper in my ear about something involving posters? Yes, potentially. Okay, we don't have the posters. The, the whisper but we was will live. soon. Yeah, we the will fun soon. thing about doing um, these live things is that we we basically usually always have somebody in one ear being like, "Hey, uh, this thing is coming up. Hey, can you be sure to talk about Yappa?" And we're like, "Oh, we yeah, I'm sorry, I was in the middle of a sentence." And it's a weird, it's a weird kind of like walking and chewing gum while rubbing your tummy and patting your head type of thing. So it takes some. I'm, I'm not making fun of you, Dan. I'm explaining to the people. Okay, now he's talking in my ear again. I'm just saying it's a thing. Um, but before we continue, I want to talk about this. We should, we should I, talk about I actually want to ask you a question real quick. Yeah, uh, but real, real quick, I wanted to ask you, you are, uh, now, now Dan wants to cut me off. You're you're <laughs> one of the biggest, you're, uh, you're a huge fan of The Witcher and you're a gigantic fan of cyberpunk in general, and you'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but like, what is your sort of uh, thermometer on this game having watched everything this morning? Because I know you hosted our pre and post show. Um, we, we got to see the new stuff for like the anime stuff, like, like looks really exciting. Um, we got to see a lot more kind of like gameplay stuff. Um, where, where are you at on this? So let me, let me be clear with this. I have been, ex this, this game, the, the existence of this game got me excited for the Witcher before the Witcher was out. Um, like I played the Witcher two when it was on Xbox 360, which is kind of like a weird, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a good game. It's not great on console. It, it could be better. Um, but they announced that they were doing cyberpunk. And I was like, that's, that's music to my ears. I'm interested in this. And then I went and checked out the Witcher three at E3 the first year they were showing that off. And I was like, okay, this is one of the most impressive demos I've ever seen. I want to see what they do with cyberpunk and everything they've right. been saying since day one has been like, totally like, I think they get it. And I think the fact that they're trying to adapt a, um, a pen and paper RPG into a triple A video game, or the fact that they were adapting a book series into a triple A video game is so much more exciting to me than uh, a studio trying to be like, Hey, we're making like all no, no disrespect, but trying to be like, Hey, we're turning a superhero into a video game or Hey, a popular right. movie franchise into a game. Because I think there's a lot more in common with um, video games in, in, you know, 400 page novels or uh, super complex rule systems for a pen and paper RPG than there is with, you know, a two hour movie. So it's I think yeah. they get it. And uh, there, I, I think you're totally right. Like, I mean, it's, it's going to be a slightly tougher sell, obviously, than say like The Last of Us 2 or Spider-Man or even an Avengers game. I, I mean, but I have a feeling that people are going to pick up for this one. It is effectively a new IP, even though it's really not a new IP. It's based, uh, you know, on, on something that's been around for a long time and something conceptual. From a gameplay perspective, I have to say, like, I definitely was a little bummed when I first found that it was first person. I've warmed up to that a ton. Reading previews today, one of the most enticing things to me, one of the times you see your sort of self in third person a lot is uh on a motorcycle or on a car and a lot of the previews said that the driving mechanics are like really simple and easy and straightforward and i actually love that like it's i think it's a thing that like kept me from truly falling in love with gta 4 uh in the same way in the way i really wanted to because and i know a lot of people want like really sort of more meticulous more realistic driving mechanics in games but when you can whip around an open world like this and it feels kind of arcadey that kicks so much ass for me personally and so that was one of the things that i saw where i was like yeah i'm in like i'm totally in on that that sounds great i want to see how the combat rolls out and fighting and progression and exploration but like this is a stunning gorgeous world and i can't wait to kind of see what it has to offer i mean at the very least it's it's going to be cool as hell to be like well we've been waiting eight years for this game it's out what happens you know it's going to be like what happens next and how do people process this so uh yeah i'm good guy we have more cyberpunk stuff to talk about in a second but uh, we also have some more collectibles to show off. We need to take a quick break right now. 
That's right. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget, we are asking you to give to the World Health Organization and the Bell Project all summer of gaming long over at donate.ign.com. Plus, you can get bonus summer of gaming content and upload your own gameplay moments by downloading the TikTok app and following IGN, then searching for IGN's summer of gaming hashtag. Please go to donate.ign.com. Please donate. Uh, we are super, super honored to be um, bringing awareness and uh, you know money towards these great, great causes that we all truly, deeply believe in. And this has been a weird year, and let's make it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, now, also, here's another weird thing: is we've been asking for Yappa video comments over on IGN.com. You go over there, go down to the comment section. There's a little thing that's called Yappa. You can do it on your phone or your laptop, and you let you just get to make like a little video. And you get to you could do you could demand things like you could demand me to eat this habanero pepper and I don't know why I wouldn't do that if Ooh, someone were nice I have enough one to be a, too. Oh, you have that's one of those? That's weird. so weird. Now oh, legally, I think HR said don't do any pranks with peppers on the thing and don't be like don't you. We definitely wouldn't be eating peppers for charity because that's like a right. totally uncouth and bizarre way of kind of making a gross no. spectacle out of it. But no, if somebody no, were, were to be like, hey, I have a yappa request. Can you eat peppers? I'm like. Well, it's going to go bad if I don't eat it. And I hear that all of the right. antioxidants are great for helping with depression. So let me just, you know, head over to IGN.com and leave a Yappa comment. Yeah, it's true. Uh, legally, we cannot tell you to eat one for charity or for any purposes other than we're hungry. But uh, we are hungry and we do love those things I mentioned earlier. So I'm not asking you to connect the dots, but I am holding a habanero pepper. We'll anyway. Right yeah. <laughs>not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need, no matter where you are. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. Everybody loves watching a speed run of their favorite game. But what if you got the opportunity to peek into the minds of the developers while they watch their games getting completely wrecked? That's exactly what happens in every episode of Game Devs React to speedruns. Yeah, you can do that. Oh my god! Yeah. We invite you to ride along with the developers as they react to, question, and enjoy some of the most skilled players exploiting and speeding through a game it took years of their life to create. Join us every Saturday for a new episode. Hey there, if you have opinions on games, movies, TV, or other weird stuff on the internet, you can take part in our new show, Power Ranking, where you can vote on all your favorite things on the internet. Go Do it now. Way. Do it. Just go. Do vote. it. Go vote. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. See you there. You are such a spicy little pepper. You're going to get eaten. You know that, don't you? You do know that. I'm going to get did you. you. Put, I, did you put yours in the fridge too? Is Are they all wet now? No, my fridge is not wet. No, no I put mine in wet? the fridge and I took it out and it's all wet. It's all like it's a wet my, pepper. 
It's not wet. Anyway, we're back. Uh, if you just watched the uh, commercial break, we just saw uh, you probably saw a ad for Fuser. Um, Max and I actually played that. We're going to check it out later on in the show. So please stick around. It's like one of my favorite Let's Plays we've ever done. Super, super fun. But in the meantime, uh, we're still talking cyberpunk because that is the big, big story of today. And Max, you are literally one of the biggest, tallest cyberpunk fans I know on Earth. You're a huge, huge nerd, but not just the game, the entire subgenre of science fiction books and dra drawings. <laughs> uh oh, there I have a, Yeah. No, I have a big stack of cyberpunk stuff here. Basically, the, the cyberpunk is as a genre has been around for a while. It is it is massive. It is deep. It is, you know, spans numerous genres. So if you were just kind of like pricking up your ears because of cyberpunk 2077, I'm so genuinely jealous of anybody who doesn't who isn't just like Oh, that looks cool because of things I've read. If they're like, oh, I'd like to find out more stuff like that. And I'm here to help with that. I would like to, to show people more things they can go check out. Um, just off the top of my head, rapid fire, obvious stuff. Uh, Blade Runner, The Matrix, Akira, Cowboy Bebop, Ghost in the Shell, uh, Neuromancer. Those are all very good pieces of science fiction, cyberpunk. But uh, it's, it's also, those are kind of like the ones that are always at the top of the list. So I figure I could run down uh, some of the sort of lesser known or more, you know, sort of adjacent to the mainstream shit that people might have might have missed along the way. Um, we, do I get to, can I just like, can I just like black out and do my thing here? There All right, go. let's start with that. After wow. playing the first four hours of what Cyberpunk 2077, it's tough to know where to get? begin. McCaffrey, get uh, out of here! I don't, you know what that is? That's, that's Why a, did he get to go play that? Because to show you about Cyberpunk, we have to go to a, a, a ghost in the shell. We have to, we have to conjure a man in the machine. <laughs> I think he wanted to play this cyberpunk because Elon Musk's girlfriend is in it. Anyway. Um, <laughs> okay, let's start first things first with Johnny Mnemonic. Johnny Mnemonic is based on a short story by William Gibson. It is it is appears in the book uh, Burning Chrome, which is a wonderful collection of short stories. Very easy to track down. Johnny Mnemonic is a movie. The movie is, it's, it's okay. It could be better. It's not great. It's about Keanu Reeves as a courier of information who basically has a hard drive in his brain and he gets a piece of valuable information stuck inside of his head, which is very similar to the plot of Cyberpunk in which the main character gets a piece of information stuck inside their head, which happens to be the cybernetic ghost of Johnny Silverhand played by Keanu Reeves. So there's this kind of wonderful like ebb and flow of that. Um, Johnny Mnemonic could definitely be better at the movie. Um, it's got some really cool set pieces. It's wonderfully, it got some wonderfully corny CG like we're seeing on the screen right here. It's just peak Keanu. It was like right after he did Speed. He could have done anything, but he did Johnny Mnemonic. Um, 1995 was a was a pretty cool year for cyberpunk in general. I think that was technically the year the World Wide Web first officially launched, and that was also when Strange Days premiered. This was uh, Catherine Bigelow directed. James Cameron, I think, had the story. This is, uh, to relate this to cyberpunk, the, the game, uh, we saw the brain dance sequence where basically people can... Uh, go into there's Johnny Mnemonic again he's, he's still doing his stuff over there they're very similar movies they came out the same year they're both cyberpunk um I saw, but so I saw Str Johnny Mnemonic in theaters I did not I was not allowed to see Strange Days in theaters that was too sexual Strange Days is very sexual uh we saw in the cyberpunk demo there's a whole thing called uh brain dance where basically you get to hack into other people's memories or like you know tap into them and they get to, you know live through somebody else's experiences um this is the entire like core principle of Strange Days where basically what if you manage to find like a mini disc cassette that happens to have a uh, footage of a murder on it as experience from the murderer's perspective or from the murderer's perspective, um, which is a thing that pops up in William Gibson's story is known as a, 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 a sim stim. That's actually a central principle of Mona Lisa Overdrive, which was the third book in the Neuromancer trilogy. Anyway, sorry, I'm just doing my thing here. I really, I just, I have fun with this. Uh, moving on, this is totally kind of shifting gears here, quasi literally, but Redline is an anime that came out in 2009. It is, I would say, if you were to triangulate uh, Cowboy Bebop, Mad Max Fury Road, and then Speed Racer, and then just jam it full of amphetamines, that's pretty much the, the plot of this movie. It's just <laughs> like, it is such a weird, fun, fast time. And it's not directly cyberpunk, but there's like some bits and pieces here and there. Um, but for all of like the weird muscle car fetishization that's happening in, in 2077, I feel like it's kind of a good fit in that sense. Like one of the first things we saw in that in that wonderful reveal trailer a couple of years ago was just like this weird hopped up high tech car kind of like shutting its doors and like lowering to the ground and just being like vroom, vroom, and it's like all right okay I'm I'm into this that. looks awesome um, this this is gorgeous dude, you, dude. I, I totally gotta would, check this out you would love this it's like it's 
it's definitely kind of stupid, but in like a really good way. I think it's the same studio that did Ninja Scroll. And it's like, they were like, let's make an anime like they used to back in the olden days. And they just, I don't know what they were consuming while making this or if they were just really excited, but it uh, it definitely shows. Um, moving on uh, to books, uh, Snow Crash is a ton of fun. Um, this is a Neil Stevenson book. It is uh, cyberpunk, but also kind of a parody of cyberpunk. It's very stupid and over the top. Um, it's, it, it's very self-aware. Like the, the, the main character of this, of this book is a hacker slash sword fighter slash pizza delivery guy whose name is hero protagonist. And it's all kind of just tongue in cheek enough that you don't get mad at it. And it's like very, it's like wonderful kind of junk food cyberpunk. Um, I think there's like, there's a whole, there's a whole thing about basically what is the, what is the bleak dystopian future version of pizza delivery look like? And I really Ooh. hope that that's a thing in in cyberpunk because like that would be like that's one of those little things you'll see in a book that would just like work so perfectly as a side quest. Um, but yeah, f- the future of pizza. Um, all right, I'm, moving I'm, on. You, you have you have me very hooked on the future of pizza. I'm very excited. Yeah, for I that. think also like cyberpunk is often like seen as just like you know you get Neuromancer and it's very like or Blade Runner. It's very like it's very dark and gritty and sad and like. Snow Crash is kind of like silly and it's like kind of fun and it's definitely more like colorful, which seems to be the direction that uh, 2077 is going a fair amount. Yeah, honestly, um, if you look at the response to the first reveal of that game, I think people were like initially bummed out that it was like so vibrant and neon, but that that you're totally right. That is a big part of it, you know? And like they, they yeah. obviously all, also showed the gritty underbelly stuff, but it's, 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 it's both sides of that coin. Um, so William Gibson is sort of famed for being the author who kind of invented cyberpunk with, with, uh, with Neuromancer. I have this weird gold leaf leather bound version of it, which is still a paper book, which is like the least cyberpunk thing imaginable. This should be like, this is what, like how the Hobbit should be bound. This is not fitting for Neuromancer at all. I should have that on Kindle pirated. Um, Neuromancer is awesome. I love it. It's a, it's the, a, a wonderful book. It is definitely like the, like the essential cyberpunk reading, but the sort of second book or the second trilogy that Gibson wrote uh, starts with virtual light, which is much more, much more grounded and scaled back. And it feels like it book came out in 93. Uh, it deals with like, uh, it deals with like online terrorists. It deals with, um, you know, gig economy. It has like augmented reality, weird, like real estate scandals. It feels extremely grounded. Like it feels like it is very much like it's a few notches off from what we actually got. Um, so I highly recommend that one. Yeah, it's funny because when you look at a cover like this, you're like, oh, this is this was them getting into like the sort of early idea of what VR or something like that could be. But it's like the, what it dips into thematically is is stuff that we're dealing with constantly now. Um, yeah, that's I mean, the weird Gibson Gibson's early stuff is like is totally just like like full on like, hey, here's just like a shotgun blast of crazy imagination. Like he was using the term cyberspace before the whole concept of the Internet was even around uh, in virtual light. It feels almost like he looked at what actually sort of came to be and he was like kind of just closing the gap between what you know what was existing and what was like in the future uh so it's this wonderful kind of like it's more grounded futurism um and his current stuff that he's doing is uh still well he he had a stretch where he's basically just making books set in present day because you don't need to invent a cyberpunk dystopia anymore because we kind of have one uh now anyway akira the movie is wonderful everyone should see it it's it's beautiful it's one of the coolest pieces of animation ever made uh however not enough people have read the manga which is phenomenal it is awesome it is uh six volumes all very long um it was published over the course of i think more than a decade uh the movie is very cool it is a it is nonsense narratively it is a weird vertical slice of what the actual story is um cyberpunk 2077 is like hey wake up samurai we got a city to burn uh what happens after you burn a city like what happens society wise like what what is like the sort of like Akira the manga is basically like if you start with Blade Runner and then you wind up in Mad Max, and it's this wonderful, just like, it's a, I mean, it's a literal epic. It's, it's stunning. So I highly recommend that for anybody. Uh, if you don't like to read that many pages and you just want to look at some cool ass pictures, Intron Depot is an awesome series of art books that was published by uh, Masamuni Shiro, who did uh, Ghost in the Shell. Um, but it's a lot of very awesome stuff like, um, you know, anime ladies riding on robots um you know cool ass goggles stuff like that um you know it's it's definitely you know a little bit little bit sexy it was maybe behind that weird you know velvet rope in your comic book shop in the 90s but uh 
it's a good time. So those are some comic book and uh, anime and manga and book and movie recommendations based on Cyberpunk. And if you are excited about Cyberpunk 2077, give them a shot. God, I love this stuff. It's fun to talk. I, about I love it. that you love this stuff, man. That like the, your your energy for this stuff is like infectious. Um, I, I I love watching you just kind of black out and go, "Hey, uh, this is my brain. It's been here for a long time." It's sort of <laughs> like it, no, it, it was like when when uh when like Hulu made that Wu Tang show, and I was just like, "Oh, oh, you like <laughs> you know?" I just went all Jared Petty on everybody. Yeah, um, no, you gotta you gotta do that sometimes. Uh, uh anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we need to take a quick break. Uh, when we get back, we are going to have an audience with the devil himself, the devil Jin from Tekken 7 in statue Ooh, form. That's right. Uh, yeah, we're, this is very exciting. There's a there's a big, big boy that's going to join us very soon, and we cannot wait to show him off. Uh, after that, we have a lot of fun stuff about more toys, uh, including another specific big boy who's big in a different way, but still very, very lovable. So uh, stick around. And don't make us do it, but we're hungry. Hey, we're gonna do it. That's a yappa. Can we eat? IGN Summer of Gaming is presented by The Last of Us Part 2. Available June 19th. Rated M for Mature. By the Army National Guard, working in our communities throughout the COVID pandemic to deliver food, build hospitals, and more. Go to nationalguard.com slash esports for more info. And by Fuser, who will be partying with us all summer long. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and iGen is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. A butte from a tree or the floor from the ground. Where have you grown my beautiful, beautiful habanich? I cannot wait Don't to say that. You. What? what? Happy oh, Beach? Uh, That's a horrible. Yeah. Uh, welcome back to Up at Noon Live uh, at 5. A bad show made by idiots, but idiots with big hearts, good intentions, and kindred spirits. If you're a kindred spirit with good intentions, go donate to our charities, the Bail Project and the World Health Organization. There should be links in the video description, but you can also head to donate.ign.com if somebody screwed up and didn't put links in the video description. 
That's right. A lot of people do that because you know what? Summer is actually the longest season, according to IGN. Speaking of good intentions, that's what the road to hell is paved with. And that's where the devil lives. That was the least insane sounding segue to talk about this enormous statue of this winged nightmare man from Tekken. Hey, everybody. Devil. Max and Brian yeah. here. And we got our hands on an early build of Fuser, which what? is a... <laughs> they, they keep doing that. That's weird. That's okay. A lot though. of ghosts. Anyway. Uh, ghost. Okay. Max, tell us about this uh, awesome <clears throat> statue of uh, Devil Jin from Tekken. Okay, so please ignore the, do not address the blanket. That's a normal blanket. A lot of people have blankets. A lot of people have blankets of the Marmoset. It just let's get a closer look there at the Devil Jin. So this is a stat. This is a quarter scale Devil Jin statue from Tekken Seven. I'll admit I'm not super up on Tekken lore, but I know that Tekken is effing bananas. Uh, so it did not really surprise me that a man with black wings and light up eyes and chains all over his pants and his pants look like Guy Fieri's shirt would be, you know, the devil. Um, but yeah, basically this is from Pure Arts who uh, made the cool cyberpunk stuff we showed off earlier. This is a, uh, is a quarter scale, like I said, it is 9.5 kilograms. It is, I, I don't even, I don't know the metric system. It is, it is uh, 68 centimeters tall. It's a big, it's a big damn statue. It's very large. Here's some close-ups of it. Um, this is wow. uh, this, I get, ships worldwide. Dude, those, I think those it goes robot for, hands are awesome, <laughs> right? Like, there's a lot going on there. Um, they go for 749 bucks a pop. Uh, believe me, I will be taking this back to the IGN office. I'm not keeping it, otherwise, my wife would become the devil gin and would <laughs> strangle me with her robot claws. Um, but if you want one, they're over at purearts.com. The, the weird thing is I decided to be like, let's show off really how big this is. And I put my dog next to it. I think we have some footage. There's the dog with the statue. Look at him. <laughs> he's fr Yeah, he's frightened by it. To be fair, That's he's amazing. a very small dog, but it's a large statue. It's very big. And um, I don't think we can even really see it properly. Like it has LEDs all over the sort of base he's on that, that shine up at him. Um, I Yeah, there's and, and there's also like there's lights inside the eyes, which are actually, here, I can show you this. Um, what? That's that's that. incredible. So um, his eyes, this is, this is oh. terrible, this is bad. Okay, there we go, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that There's is like a bunch so of little, cool. little teeny tiny batteries in there. There's an easy little switch to get them off. And so it sticks onto his head with a, a magnet, basically? Yeah, it's all, it, all, it all sticks together with magnets, which is very considerate. Um, I'm also just like, constant, like I think, I think carrying this thing down my stairs was the most dangerous uh, adventure I've had in my home. I was just like terrified of shattering it. Um, it's freaking massive. So there you go. Was you it was it like in, in terms of pieces to put together? Was it just like just a few? Like did the wings have to? Like, was it all? So it's the it's the head. The wings are each a separate piece, and then the sort of the. Uh, the torso or like the, 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 the entire body of him just all clicks out and oh, there like steel go, yeah. rods in his feet. Here's me unboxing it. I'm also mm -hmm. a large man, un unlike my dog, which is small. So you can see exactly how normal size the statue makes me look by, by comparison using perspective. The dog is small, <laughs> but I am large. We, meanwhile, we look stupid when we walk down the street together, me and the dog, not the statue. I anyway, thought you meant you and me, and I, I also agree with that too. Uh, I no, the details on the thing <laughs> Yeah. We look we look stupid right here. Um, the details on this thing look incredible, especially I really like the uh, the way they did this sort of like craggy eroded rock structure. Yeah, the box is gigantic. Yeah, it's it's Man, a, it's an enormous box. Um, but yeah, they they do a whole lot. These companies that make this stuff and Pure Arts is great about it too. Like the the packaging is is designed to be like let's keep this stuff you know safe and sound. Um, and they uh, yeah. It's it's gorgeous. So this is limited to uh, fifteen hundred pieces, and it's seven hundred forty nine bucks a pop. It's shipping worldwide. PureArts.com. So huge thanks to those guys for sending this over. Um, we actually have one more tease of theirs. Um, they are working on. We showed off the Assassin's Creed. Uh, what is it? It's Altair and Bayek, and they also make an yep. Ezio. And this is a first look at a tease of um, what's his name. I Ivor from uh, from uh, Valhalla, the one that's not even out that's yet. That's right. The, new, the Nordic Viking adventure. 
Um, yeah, if you if you saw our uh, episode a couple weeks ago where we showed off the statues of Bayek and Altair, they are like uh, unbelievably good looking, um, gorgeous, incredibly detailed, really cool features in terms of like lighting up. Um, and so I really can't wait to see what they do with this. Like this is this is a game we don't know a ton about, so this is like super interesting. I mean, we've seen some teasers and like a like a little bit of of, uh, of footage and stuff like that, but um, this is gonna be a big one. And so I honestly like these are expensive but they're ridiculously high quality and i think that's also you're buying into something that they are incredibly limited and so mm-hmm. like you know you're going to be one of the only people that gets this thing so that's it's just, anyway this is for hardcore super fans yep anyway uh we have to take a quick break uh we'll be back in just a moment with some very silly nonsense as opposed to all of the other stuff we've done today which has been very serious and uh thank you for bearing with us we'll be right back i promise IGN Summer of Gaming is presented by The Last of Us Part 2, available June 19th, rated M for Mature. By the Army National Guard, working in our communities throughout the COVID pandemic to deliver food, build hospitals, and more. Go to nationalguard.com esports for more info. And by Fuser, who will be partying with us all summer long. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent, going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Everybody loves watching a speed run of their favorite game. But what if you got the opportunity to peek into the minds of the developers while they watch their games getting completely wrecked? That's exactly what happens in every episode of Game Devs React to speedruns. Yeah, you can do that. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> we invite you to ride along with the developers as they react to, question, and enjoy some of the most skilled players exploiting and speeding through a game it took years of their life to create. Join us every Saturday for a new episode. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and IGN is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. One of the most beautiful, and you know, I will, t- yeah, I'll take, I'll take the ring off because that you are that special. Oh, are we it back? Doesn't, it doesn't smell spicy, but my throat hurts after smelling it. What does that mean? Ooh, I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. <clears throat> now, um, we don't like to get too serious on this show, but there is one issue that needs to be addressed. And I want to get just kind of serious for a second. There has never been a decent action figure of Dennis Nedry from Jurassic Park. Until that now, right. and when it rains, it pours. We are, are very, very lucky. Max, this husky hacker who steals dinosaur embryos and puts Barbasol on a piece of pie has been a cinematic icon for like 25 years now. And thanks to Mattel, he's finally getting immortalized in plastic. And we really, really, really want to talk about him because he's both of our, I would say one of our favorite characters in, in cinematic history. But I think before we get started, um we should eat a habanero pepper and i want to give a quick shout out to uh Vern and our friends over at hot pepper gaming uh for originating this idea on the internet one of my favorite things in the world max and i were both on that show uh, uh rest in peace to that show uh, a great great thing 
But in the meantime, we will pay homage to that show by eating these habanero peppers in which we have big bags of. And then we'll talk about Dennis Nedry because why not? Here we go. One, two, All right. three. Okay. Please, no, no, no. Oh, there's that. There's that funny smell in my nose. Hmm. I don't want to get the hiccups again. <coughs> yeah. So. <coughs> Dennis Nedry. What a great. <laughs> Yeah, the hiccups already. All right, so um, so anyway, uh, there's there would normally be, there would normally be a convention exclusive, you know, at Comic Con or something this year. I'm clicking on the wrong window. Um, Mattel is doing a wonderful four inch action figure of Dennis Nedry in his in his conversation with Dodgson outfit. Right, we got a picture of it right here. It comes in the Barbasol can, which rotates. To, not, to reveal not dinosaur embryos, but Dennis Nedry himself, and he's got all of his special things. Look at this. It slides off. He's got his Hawaiian shirt. He's got his big his big duffel bag. Uh huh. He's got his he's got his pie. He's got his Barbasol. So fun fact: until I was probably sixteen years old, I thought that you actually could put Barbasol on pie. I thought that was a thing <clears throat> that people did. But anyway, that's very cool. Look at this funny face. Look at this funny man here. I'm going to um, get some milk. I'll be right back. Okay, you good there? It hurts like an F word in my mouth right now. Anyway, let's take a look here. So everyone loves this scene. Also, they just announced uh, anecdotally for, what is it, Jurassic World Evolution or whatever the next, whatever the next movie is called, Jurassic World 2 or 3 or whatever, the, the Colin Trevorrow one. Um, they announced that that guy who plays wow. Dodgson is going to be in the new movie. But it's like, get Wayne Knight back in there. Get him in there. He, I want to see him. You see, nobody cares. Anyway, that's a great scene. I love that part. Don't cheap out on me, Dodgson. Um, but great news, because there's not just one action figure of Dennis Nedry. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. A six-inch a one. There's a six-inch one oh. from the Amber Collection, which is kind of the, the Mattel uh, you know, Black Series version of, um, of, uh, of Jurassic Park. But I love this one. I want this one a lot. I got so excited when I saw this. My tongue hurts a lot. Oh my my god, it hurts like a it's just my throat, really. It's just oh god, it's right in the back of my throat. Ah. But yeah, (sighs) take a good look at Dennis Nedry here. He is a real, real big boy. He's got his windbreaker on because he had to get out in the rain and bring (laughs) the embryos out to his friend Dodgson. And he comes with a stand, a barbersaw cam, and he has a little head. Let's keep talking about it. Let's keep going. Look at the pictures. I don't know if the beer makes it better or worse. That's bad. I, it's not I helping. Dog. It, gotta do... oh, I found a seed in my mouth. Oh. Okay. I think I'm crying now. Hot damn. Oh, anyway, let's take a look at more, more of these. Pictures. I'm excited about this. So we were supposed to. There's also. There, this is the great news. There's also, there's also a Dilophosaur that is in this scale, too, that comes with not just the big, funny, frilled lizard fan neck. It also has like a folded up version. Which looks like something very suggestive, but then he's got that funny sign that has this thing that spins around where he gets lost on. But I'm excited about this. I think that I I'm, I don't want to I don't want to body shame. I think they didn't make Dennis Nedry fat enough because Wayne agree. Knight was was he was pretty hefty back then. He also I don't know if you've seen Wayne Knight in recent photos. He lost a ton of weight and good for him. That's awesome. But like I don't know if it's a, if it's like a articulation oh. issue or something. They don't make a lot of they don't make a lot of husky action figures, you know. No, but, it's very um, difficult to do it, actually. It's really hard to make it. That, it's also that plastic it costs a lot, so they have to charge you more money for it. Look at man. that Barbasol. I, I bet, a, I bet a, big, a big uh hiccup with this was getting the license to use Barbasol Beard Buster officially. I I have a feeling I'm going to have a big hiccup soon, too, if you know what I'm talking about. Look at um, this. He made a funny picture. Of he also comes – he's got the alternate heads with the poopsie face. He gets the slime on his face. Hey. <laughs> but hey, it's it's not uh it's not cheap to be putting uh logos on stuff. You gotta do sometimes you gotta use it twice. 
<laughs> it comes with a little, a little, a little head. Oops. <laughs> I like that he has he has two heads. He has the regular head and he has the slime head, but then he's also got two sets of hands. There's the holding hands and then there's the frightened hands, which are like this. Well, he's this like, feels oh, no, like, my face. Like, oh. Feels like something from Saw where there's a poopsie and your hands are there, but they're cut off and they can't stop the poopsie from hitting your face. That's an uh, action figure is available right now. You know what? I'm, if I have to review this action figure, which I don't think I will, because we don't do that, and also I haven't done that in like since high school. But if I did, I would probably dock some points because it doesn't come with the stick when he goes, "See the stick? See the stick? Stupid!" And he tries to feed it to the Lophosaur, and then he, he gets killed. Max, anyway. I think you're a good you're a good person to review this action figure, the Poopsy one, because you have a lot of uh, history of getting swirlies back in high school from all the big bullies. I never had a swirly. No one ever did that. But when I first moved when I first moved to California. I said something stupid in class and some some kid was like, hey, dude, how many times have you been canned? And I was like, is that like getting drunk? And they were like, no, dude, that's when someone shoves you in a garbage can. And I was like, oh, that's never happened. And they're like, well, oh. we'll see if that happens. I don't think that ever happened to me because I was I was a very large boy in high school. So anyway, um, <sighs> eating peppers on camera and destroying our throats isn't even the craziest thing we've done this week. Uh, we actually had a, a DJ battle where we played Fuser, which is super, super fun. And uh, we're going to take a look at that right after the break. And I'm going to chug more milk. No break. Just kidding. I'm going to drink the milk all by myself. We're going to okay, we're gonna uh, show. Let's, okay, wait. Whatever. So we, we, go. we got exclusive hands-on with Fuser, which is um, the new game from Harmonix. Oh God, it's like a, a DJ festival game. It's it's very cool. We got an early build of it. Um, you can be a very good DJ in it. You can be very cool and have a cool music festival, or you can do the opposite of that. Guess which one of us did that? Let's take a look. Early build of Fuser, which is a game from Harmonix and NCSoft, which lets you take control of being a cool DJ in front of a giant festival. Uh, the version we have has uh, a handful of songs in it. The final version is coming out later this fall. It's coming to PC, Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. It's going to have a huge library of over 100 songs at launch, covering a wide variety of genres, from rock and pop to hip-hop and country, all sorts of stuff. Uh, Brian, you have some experience actually making music, correct? Yeah, I love to produce music, and so I'm super interested in this game. This game has a lot of options in terms of of how you want to construct mixes and take songs and bring them all together. Brian, and that's that's great. I have no experience making any kind of music. I think I'm, I'm pretty bad at it, but I also love to play dress up and I have a cool DJ persona that I've never told anyone about. So I think I have what it takes to make a much more impressive festival set than you do. Okay, all right, all right, fine, fair enough. Let's have a DJ battle. And we'll let the audience decide which is more important. Is it the music or is it the pageantry? I'll go with the music because I love to make music and you go with the costumes because you love to dress like a buffoon. I'll go first. Here's the rules. I'll pick my own songs and for the second round, we'll pick each other's songs. All right, well, you watching at home could be the judge. May the best man win. I agree. Let's give it a shot. It'll be me. Stop that. All right, Max, so this is my DJ. As you can see, he's dressed exactly like I am in, in real life. Very simple, very comfortable, very casual. Yeah, you look like you just got out of bed. I did. I'm gonna pick out my crate because that's the most important part. Let's start with The Message, one of my favorite songs of all Can't time. Can't knock that. We'll throw in a little DMX, 50 Cent. Absolutely throwing in some Regulate. Middle school, high school, okay. Yep, some Rock the Casbah, one of the dopest bass lines of all time. Let's get a little Nelly. Let's get some hot in here. You know what? Let's go crazy. A little bit of Coldplay. How about that? And then we'll do a tiny bit of Whitney Houston. Are you ready for this? You look like you just woke up. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I did. And you know what? Look, look at that energy. You see that? Let's start one of my favorite beats of all time. Here we go. That's a drop. That is a drop right there. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, you see those perfect beat drops? Well, you're gonna mix it up a little bit? That's just a regular song, man. Okay. All right. Ooh. 50, bring the drums in. Well, which is it? Are you in a club or a Casbah? I'm in a club bar. <laughs> Pick one. Those in the club strings give me the anxiety. They give me the palpitations, man. There we go. We got Nelly getting hot, taking off his clothes, and we got Whitney Houston's drums. It's a sentence I never thought I'd say, but here we are. 
Okay, I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. Bring in a little bit of cold play, because that was my wild card. That's my, oh, my secret was, ingredient. Was everyone having too too much fun there? You gotta have like a nice sad song, get all serious. Too much dancing. No, these drums are good, man. I'm gonna bring it full circuit for you, ready? Here we go. See? Now it's like an emotional, emotional classic hip hop song. So I think I killed it. What do you got? Well, I would like to introduce you to uh, my character, Cap and Hot Dogs. He's the DJ at the International Hot Dog Festival, which is uh, primarily about hot dogs, but also music. So we're going to be what? doing lots of music and everyone's going to be having hot dogs. Can you talk about this tattoo and this this blazer? It's a uh, rainbow, but instead of a cloud at one end, it's ice cream. And also I'm wearing a lot of body glitter. That was actually an unintentional. I got glitter bomb backstage because someone was having too much fun. All right. Well, let, let's let's see what you got musically. All right. Well, obviously I want Smash Mouth because that's okay. the best song ever made. They do All Star. Do you know All Star? Yeah, dude. I've seen Shrek. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Lizzo. Because uh -huh. there's the good horns and stuff on there. Also good horns on D. DMX. Definitely. Yep. Yeah, let's get some Brad Paisley in there because why the hell not? Get some Gaga. Yeah, you're making it. Harley Ray. You're making it difficult for me to pick the songs for you when oh, this is this is your choice here. I just don't. I don't listen to a lot of music. You know. <laughs> All right, let's get the Fat Boy Slim in there. Okay. Cool. What is happening? Oh, also, I have cowboy boots because I like to mix it up, and they're um, they have good arch support. All right, what are you starting with here? I mean, obviously, some Smash Mouth. And then everyone loves the dulcet tones of Brad Paisley. Hell yeah, baby. And I've always... Let's, let's speed it up a little bit. Let's get... Let's get wild. Yeah, baby. Oh, wow. Yep. This is a lot. This is a lot to take in. Okay. <laughs> where's those? Where's the DMX horns? I th that might be a bit much. All right. I think the crowd might get a little. There we go. There we go. Now we're talking. People, okay. are, look at how much fun everyone's having. They got funny stuffed animals and stuff. I'm trying to nod my head to this. Figure out the right. Wow. My big problem with X Gun Give It To You is it's honestly too slow of a song. I think that it's. I think yeah. your big problem with music is all of it. <laughs> <laughs> DMX would, would love it here. <laughs> love, I have a great time at my festival. I don't feel well. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else here is having a great time. I wonder what this does. There we go. Getting a little help there. There's my dog friend. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, that's a good drop. That might have been cheating, but I'm doing, doing okay. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> have a great time up there. You know, that's really what counts. Yeah. So that's the All International right. Hot Dog Festival. It's the number one music festival on earth, and everyone loves to go here. Have a great time. Listen to my music. You know what? You you brought it you brought it back around, and I appreciate that. All right, Max. So I think I knocked it out of the park in the last one. So I want you to pick eight songs. I I have great taste in music, and uh, I uh -oh. also know that you don't always agree with my taste in music. So let's start out with "Don't Fear the Reaper." B O C. Got it. Okay, that's a that's a sufficient amount of cowbell to start with. Let's get some <laughs> Panic at the Disco there. I should take these sunglasses off. It's very hard to Are see. Are you just like fumbling around there? Yeah, I'm in the darkness. Okay, call me maybe. Dude, let's get Coldplay in there too. I'm really good at Coldplay. I just proved that. Mm. Ooh, Old Town Road for sure. Okay. And let's uh, let's go down a little further. There we go. Thunder, okay. Imagine Dragons. The kids love it. They love the Imagine Dragons. Oh, you love Jonas Brothers. Get Sucker in there. You have all those Ooh, posters up in man. your room. You love the Jonases. <laughs> All of, all of them. Don't tell people about my room. <laughs> we got to do some party rock and let's get the party rock anthem with the LMFAO. There we go. All right, I'm ready for this. There we go. And look, it's the daytime, you know? It's this yeah. is we're going to have a different vibe than last time. All right, I'm going to let I'm going to let you pick the first song that I have to start with. Oof. Uh, let's Who do you got for me? Do some Jonas's. Get the Jonas Brothers in there. Oh man. All right. And then let's get some, let's get some some LMFAO in there. Party rock is in the house tonight. This is a challenge. <laughs> yes, that's what we're doing here. And what about uh, what about some Old Town Road? Just get that in there too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Okay, this is working. This is working. I'm taking over from here. I don't need you anymore. All right, all right. That is totally working. Are you kidding me? Shades are going back on for this one. Wow. <laughs> Those strings, man. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? We're bringing the Jonas vocals in. <laughs> The crowd right. is just losing it, like going crazy out there. Yeah, this is crazy. Throwing balloons around. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? You're good, you're good at this, man. You know what you're doing. I am so proud of that mix. Nicely done, nicely done. All right, Max. Uh, let's start with, let's get a little fun here. Let's let's start with the chain smokers. Don't let me down. Head on down to give me everything. I think we should get a little bit of Post Malone because he's got tons of tattoos. You have tons of tattoos. Let's get a little bit of Cardi B. You love Lady Gaga, right? Yeah. Throw her in there. You know, she's half motorcycle. That is true. Yeah. You know, a lot of people were born like that or born this way. <laughs> um, Thrift Shop with Macklemore. I know you love him. And then we'll do a little J Balvin and, and Willy Willy from uh, Magente, a song I don't know anything about. Okay. And uh, you know what? Let's give you some Stir Fry by Migos. I know two of these songs. Oh, I know what was, was screwing me up last time is I wasn't wearing cool sunglasses. So let's try this out this time. There we go. All right. I'm gonna pop some tags. Yeah. Got $20 in my uh, starting with an acapella, I dig it. It's really a, it's kind of a spoken word festival sometimes. People like to mix it up. <laughs> All right, and I'm I'm I am having a hard time seeing with the glasses on, but I'm gonna make the best of it. A lot of musicians have this problem. This is working for me, man. I'm popping the shades on too. The crowd is going bananas. I think I again it's yes. It's hard yes, to see with the glasses. They are in fact going bananas. I'm into this. You know what? I'm going to get crazy here. I'm going to add... This this is working. I don't understand. This is working really well. It's because I'm an international DJ at the International Hot Dogs Festival. I Let's not push it. it. More vocals, huh? You know, about 80% of music is the is the, what people are saying over it. I feel like a lot of your strategy is just to keep people confused. Yeah. No, it keep, keeps it exciting. Keeps it keeps right. it interesting. What? Music. So is this um? Is your first time hearing music? I've I've heard of some of it before. Two or three songs in the past. <laughs> Look at that! I got a light show. Okay, I think I'm having a great time. Let's see if they can get crazy for me. Help me out. Here we go. Yeah, music, music. Yes, everyone dance to the music. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who won the Battle of the Century. Well, I do. It was probably me. Uh, Max, you did a lot better than I thought you would. Although, uh, you, I think you definitely put a lot more work into your character and your personality than you did the actual music. But, you know, you're getting better and better. And I think uh, it's called showmanship. And it's a big it's a big part of it. OK, I think a big part of music is music. But if you want to know, a lot of people would come to my festival. I think they would also leave early. Does that count? Got glow sticks, hot dogs. I had glow sticks. You what about you, viewers at home? Would you come to my festival, the International Hot Dog Festival of Music and Dance? I think I won. Max thinks he won. Ladies and gentlemen, sound off in the comments below and let us know who you think won the DJ battle of the century. Was it DJ Brian at the Casbah Club, Knock It Out of the Park, DJ Festapalooza World Tour 2020, official title, or DJ Hot Dogs? at the Hot Dog Festival. That's Captain Hot Dogs. Let us know in the comments and for all things Fuser, which is coming to PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch this year and lets you mix music with over a hundred different songs. Be sure to check it out. Stick with IGN, because we got your back. Head down to those comments and just type DJ Brian one. It's really easy. Just write, just all you have to do is write Captain Hot Dogs, I promise. It's free and it's a great time. Go just write Captain Hot Dogs in the comments. Go check out Fuser either way, even though I won't. When we first met All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was up at noon. That was legit one of my favorite Let's Plays we've ever done, Max. That was super, super fun. Um, uh, 
yeah, please go check out that game. It's 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 an uh, absolute blast. Um, yeah. Also, I I feel healed. I feel better you now. You feel good from you, just, you yeah, drank all that milk. You, you drank all the milk. Yeah, no, I. It's my kids' I just, milk I just too. Work, like, work through the pain. Yeah. You're get, did you get hot pepper it. juices in the milk, and your kids gonna get the, the hot peppers in the milk now? It's gonna, that's terrible. You sick, you sick man. Uh, actually, something I hadn't really considered. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, throw, that was throw, up you gotta burn that milk. That was up at noon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, huge <laughs> thanks to everyone who tuned in. Uh, thank you to Pure Arts for sending over the statues and giving us a scoop on the Cyberpunk Sports Bike. And a big, huge, massive thanks to everyone who donated to our wonderful charities. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out tomorrow at uh, 12 p.m. Pacific to 4 p.m. Pacific. Uh, there is going to be the wonderful uh, you know, Pride Month uh, Quarantine LGBTQ plus uh, stream happening on IGN. A bunch of our friends are jumping on that. So if you want to be supportive, uh, come on by and, uh, you know, Say some nice things in the comments um, if they're even even doing that. But um, yeah, it's yeah, for LGBTQ yeah. Freedom Fund um, to help raise money for that and just also play some games and hang out and have a nice time. Yeah, go join that. It's going to be a big, awesome party uh, and uh, support our coworkers and support your queer friends all over the world. Um, speaking of parties, I do want to uh, issue an apology to our party animal fans of Michelangelo. I know I put a picture of the action figure of Michelangelo in the thumbnail. Uh, we ate hot peppers and we were uh, going to talk about the new Ninja Turtle toys. Uh from Super 7, uh, good friends of ours, but um, we uh, were too busy chugging milk and talking about Dennis Nedry. So I promise I think, we'll get to it next week. I, I think our like first two weeks of doing this show live again, I kept putting Lego Pirates in the thumbnail, but then we'd run out of time and we couldn't talk about <laughs> Lego Pirates. <laughs> so it's just li it was lied to people. And no one ever okay. was like, clickbait. Anyway, um, now there is some stuff that, you, that you've written here. I think we legally are required to read it. So I think let's, let's, let's do our You want to read it? All no, right, yeah, we're winding it. we're winding things down for today, but there's still more fun on the horizon. On Tuesday the thirtieth <laughs> at three p.m. Pacific time, we'll be doing a Summer of Games award ceremony followed by an after party. What does that mean? You have to tune in to find out. Also, we don't know. We're tired. That's right. So farewell, my treasured treats, my sweet cinnamon whatabouts, my licorice gataboots. May your dreams be blessed with peppermint kisses and soft peachy whispers. Go watch the hit Sylvester Silverstein. <laughs> 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 film daylight streaming exclusively on hbo max which was named after max scoville uh so is peacock because that's what people called them in high school <laughs> and several other streaming services i can't do it i can't <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, anyway, Sylvester Stallone fights uh, like a, a tunnel in that movie. So if that, if you're, if if all your other apps are broken, you have that as an option. I watched that movie earlier today. That's not, that's not a good movie. What do you mean earlier today? I just put it on in the background. I was filming that video of my dog next to the Tekken statue. <laughs> IGN Summer of Gaming is presented by The Last of Us Part 2, available June 19th, rated M for Mature. By the Army National Guard, working in our communities throughout the COVID pandemic to deliver food, build hospitals, and more. Go to nationalguard.com slash esports for more info. And by Fuser, who will be partying with us all summer long. News, Games, and More is IGN's live news show every day of the week that covers all the day's news about games, movies, comics, and of course, more. This is our daily live show that takes a rotating cast of IGN talent going over all the latest news of the day while taking live questions and comments from chat. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, and you can find us on Mixer.com slash IGN, YouTube.com slash IGN, and Twitch.tv slash IGN. See you there. The next generation of video gaming is on the horizon, and iGen is here to bring you the latest PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news and analysis in our new weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch 2020. We'll bring on the experts to discuss and analyze all the latest developments around these new consoles. From frame rates, services, features, peripherals, and even all the new tech jargon, Next Gen Console Watch 2020 will keep you up to speed on everything leading up to the next generation of gaming. Join us every Friday for a new episode. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. 
From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need, no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, memes, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat.